hello everyone welcome to another video and in this video I want to talk about specifically how many hours you should spend to become ready for a DevOps interview I've already created one video uh, where I've spoken about the different skills and technologies that you need to learn to get your first DevOps job I'm going to give you the link of that video in the description as well but in this video I've added a few more elements that I wanted to talk about so let's start the video so the first skill is Linux administration. So I think you should not spend more than 20 hours learning this. And I've already created one playlist to cover all these things, which I am, uh, I mean, which I have uh, mentioned here. So you can go through that playlist to learn about all these things. And that is just good enough to get started with Linux to start your DevOps journey. Okay. So what are the things that you need to learn in Linux? are basic commands like CP, CD, MV, PWD, etc. Then there are some user management commands that, that you should know like user add, group add, user del, user mod. Then you should know what is a bash shell, okay, what is a command line interface, what is the syntax of a command. Then you should know what are uh, the default directories in Linux, uh, what is the file system hierarchy. Then the redirection operators greater than and pipe symbols are really important to learn. Then uh, VI or Vim text editor, which are the most widely used text editors in Linux. I mean, one of the most widely used uh, text editor in Linux. Then Linux file and directory permissions, read, write, execute. Then there are some commands like chmod, chown, chgrp, etc. Then how to manage different processes using ps command how to kill a process in case we have to troubleshoot an issue, then how to manage different daemons and services in Linux. So there are two types of uh, utilities that you might use, uh, system CTL or service. So system CTL is used in Red Hat 7, 8 and 9 specifically. And if you are using uh, the operating system like Ubuntu, in that case service commands will also work. Then uh, SSH basics. SSH stands for secure shell. So you should know uh, what is the password base, what is the password based authentication versus the key based authentication, how to create the keys, how to copy the keys to the remote server to use key based authentication, how to change the, uh, the configuration of SSH file. Then uh, you should know the default log directories. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm talking about slash 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 log directory where you create, I mean, uh, where you get some default uh, log files for different processes in Linux. So you should know the basics of that. Then uh, basics of networking and the basic networking commands in Linux. So when I, when I talk about uh, the basics of networking, you should know what is an IP, what is a DNS, what is MAC address, router, switch, etc. And when I talk about the commands, I'm talking about NMCLI command, IP, ADDR, show command to see the IP address in Linux. And there are some other commands as well, which I've included in one of the videos that you can go through. Then you should know what is a secure copy command or SCP, what is SFTP, uh, what is star, gzip, then how to schedule jobs using crond, etc. And uh, then you should know the uh, package management tools like yum or dnf or aptcat. So aptcat is the package manager for Ubuntu operating system. Yum and dnf are for Red Hat based uh, operating systems. So I've created one full playlist uh, which is going to give you just enough information that you should know to learn Linux. So you, you can go through that. I'm going to give you the link of that playlist in the description of the video. The next is cloud platform. So once again, I think you should not spend more than 20 hours. Uh, and it is it is really important that you create servers on cloud state away rather than uh, using some virtualization software like Oracle, VirtualBox or VMware, and then getting uh, one VM locally on your on your laptop. It is it is important for you to uh, start with uh, the cloud servers directly because uh, the DevOps work is being done on cloud these days. So uh, so that is what uh, is, is, is recommended. So uh, depending on your choice and interest, you can start with any of the cloud platforms like AWS, Azure or GCP. You should know at least one of them. Since I'm from AWS background, so I can talk about that all day. So in, in AWS, you have a service called EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud that is used to create virtual servers in AWS. Okay, And I'm, I'm working on 
I'm getting a full playlist on on cloud uh, uh, this learning as well on AWS. That playlist will be out soon. All right. Then next is uh, the containers or a Docker. I think you should just spend uh, ten hours to learn Docker. Okay, not more than that. And once again, it is really important that you create and manage the containers on cloud. Uh, one of one of the cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, or GCP. <clears throat> And uh, if using AWS, uh, since I'm I'm from AWS background, so I'm talking about AWS here. You can create containers on top of EC2 instances, or you can use managed services in AWS like ECS, Elastic Container Service. I'm going to cover both ways in one of my videos to show you how you can create the containers on an EC2 instance versus how you can create an Elastic Container, uh, how you can create a container uh, on Elastic Container Service. Then next is Kubernetes. Which is the container orchestration platform, which is the most widely used container orchestration platform to manage thousands of containers at the same time. So once again, I would highly recommend that you create Kubernetes cluster directly on cloud servers. And if you are using AWS, uh, then you, uh, you can use tools like COPS, which stands for Kubernetes Operations, which is a way to create a cluster in AWS. Or you can use AWS managed services like EKS, which stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. Next is CI/CD pipelines. I think you should not spend more than five hours, and you can learn any one of uh, these three. You can learn uh, the uh, Jenkins tool, which is the uh, 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 open source tool. So you can install uh, Jenkins on top of EC2 instances, and you can use it to create your CI/CD pipeline for your project. You can use the managed service in AWS called AWS Code Pipeline, and you can use uh, in, in in Azure. There's uh, there's one more uh, concept of Azure DevOps. So depending on your choice, you can use Azure DevOps as well. The next is the monitoring tools. So whatever a project you work on, you have to manage. I mean, uh, 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 you have to manage and monitor the entire infrastructure. The uh, the servers and your uh, main container applications. So for that, there are multiple tools available in the market, like Datadog, Splunk, Kibana, Nagios, and then uh, this Prometheus tool. So depending on your choice, you can you uh, uh, you can learn any any one of these tools, and uh, I think that should be good enough. Okay, so I'm I'm uh, most likely to create a playlist on on Prometheus. And Grafana tools, okay. So uh, that'll be done a little later in the coming months. Then after that, uh, infrastructure as code. So I think you should not spend more than ten hours. And once again, you can use any or any one of these tools. The most famous one and the most widely used right now is a Terraform, which is which is a, a platform independent. Which means uh, it doesn't matter whether you are using AWS, GCP, or Azure. You can use this tool to uh, be your IAC tool, okay? But apart from that, you have AWS CloudFormation, you have Ansible, you have Puppet, you have Vagrant, you have Chef. So depending on your choice and interest, you can choose any any one of these tools, and you should not spend more than ten hours. Then get basics. I think you only need to spend two hours to learn the the uh, basics of Git. So in AWS, there's a service called AWS. Uh, Code commit that you can use uh, to uh, interact with Git. Then you have a GitHub, and you also have an uh, 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 open source tool, which is a GitLab. So again, depending on your choice, you can choose any one of the tools, and any one of these tools, and uh, you can spend two hours to learn it. After that. Uh, Okay, programming language or scripting. So, I believe this is actually debatable because some people say that you should learn a programming language, but it depends where you want to work. Because where I work, I don't write uh, I mean codes myself. So there's a team of developers who write codes, and apart from that, all the work is being done by me. So it depends if you have interest. I mean, please learn uh, I mean, uh, one of the programming uh, uh, languages like uh, a Python or Go. And 
if, if you want to learn scripting, you can go for Bash scripting, which is one of the famous uh, scripting tools these days. But you also have the option of learning the Python scripting, okay, depending on your choice. And once again, I think uh, eight hours is, is more than sufficient to learn this. Then if you want to do some projects, I think uh, spending 20 hours on, I mean, doing a real time project, uh, applying all the technologies that you've uh, learned in the above slides, I think it is it is more than sufficient to get the hands on and to apply your knowledge and check, I mean, how much you've actually learned. Okay, so you, I think you, uh, you can spend 20 hours on uh, creating your own projects in DevOps. Then DevOps interview questions and answers, I would say at least spend 20 hours. Uh, 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 no, uh, I'm trying to prepare yourself for, uh, for an interview and I think that is more than sufficient. So I've created one Excel file as well, which I'm going to share in the description of the video. And uh, this is just a screenshot of what I recommend and, uh, and what I say that you should uh, spend a uh, time on each uh, technology. So, so I mean, whatever I've I've just uh, mentioned in the above slides is like. Uh, so, so suppose you have to spend twenty hours on Linux administration, and you spend two hours per day. So that means that you have to dedicate ten days to it. Okay. So ten days with two hours each day is more than sufficient to learn Linux. And and similarly for cloud platform like AWS, you can spend 10 days, two hours each day. And then for containers, it is, uh, again, it is just um, five days. And then for uh, the the uh, container orchestration tool, like uh, Kubernetes, you can spend 10 hours. For CSED pipelines, uh, if you spend uh, two days and you just spend uh, five hours on it, with, uh, with uh, 2.5 hours uh, per day, I think uh, two days are, are more than sufficient. And for a monitoring, again, just a two days of 2.5 hours per day are sufficient. For infrastructure as code, if you spend two hours per day, then five days. And similarly for a Git basics, just one day of two hours each. Then on scripting, if you spend two hours a day, I think four days are more than sufficient. And if you if you are working on real time projects on in DevOps, then you can uh, if you spend two days. Uh, per day, I think you can spend uh, 10 days learning it. And interview question and answers, once again, if you spend two hours per day, you can you can spend 20 hours, so uh, that will be 10 days. So in total, if you count these number of days, it will come as 69. If you convert these days into months, it will come as 2.266 roughly. If you just round it off, it is coming as 2.5 months. So I mean, what I suggest is 2.5 months of a complete dedication to DevOps is, is, is I mean, more than sufficient to become uh, a DevOps interview ready. Okay, so this is, this is just uh, 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 my suggestion, but, but uh, uh, it will depend from person to person how much you can spend time and how much, you know, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, how much you can learn so it, it will depend on that, but 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 I think in general, I think uh, just spending two and a half months dedicatedly on DevOps is just I mean more than sufficient to become a DevOps interview ready. Okay, so I I am going to share this Excel sheet with you if you want to make any changes uh, as, as 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 per your needs. I mean you can do so, and uh, I mean you can calculate on your own how much time you would want to spend learning DevOps. All right, so so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope. Uh, it was useful to you uh, and uh, I mean you can share it with others if, if anyone needs to learn about this and uh, you can like my video and you can subscribe to my channel. Alright guys I am going to end the video now and I am going to see you in the next one.